invite our next dignitary, the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, who served as Prime Minister of the Federation of St. Christopher and Nevis during the period 7th of July 1995 to the 18th of February 2015. Thank you, Madam Clark. Mr. President of the Nevis Island Assembly, please permit me to adopt the protocol that has been established. But also allow me please to recognize the Deputy Governor General Mrs. Liebert, Honorable uh, Her Honor, Mrs. Liebert, and her husband, and also the our living, living national hero, Sir Kennedy Alphonse Simmons, with all of the other accolades, the Prime Minister, Dr. Harris, and the three premiers, that is the sitting premier, Honorable Mark Brantley, and former premiers, um, Joseph Parry and Vance Emery, and all other dignitaries who are here with us this morning. I begin by indicating that it is indeed a distinct honor and a privilege for me to address this honorable assembly on this most auspicious yet very somber occasion as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of the MV Christina disaster under the theme, MV Christina, architect of post-independence St. Kitts at Nevis. I believe, Mr. Speaker, that it is fitting that I repeat these words, I quote, through many dangers, toils, and snares. I have already come. His grace hath brought me safe thus far, and grace will lead me home. End of quote. These sacred words of the famous hymn, Amazing Grace, are what really comfort me when I think about the very terrible tragedy that took place on that fateful day of the 1st of August, 1970. I believe that some 50 years ago, and I remember that that beautiful day, 50 years ago, was a day that I too will never forget. On the Saturday morning, I actually traveled on the Christina, traveling from Nevis to St. Kitts. I was, in fact, in Nevis during my summer vacation, August vacation, staying with my brother and his friends. My brother Peter Douglas was serving police officer at that time here in Nevis. I had come up a few weeks to be with my friends here, the children of Pastor Esdale, Cameron, Cammy Clark, who was a personal friend of mine, stayed at my home in St. Paul's, in St. Kitts, whenever he was 
overnighting in St. Kitts. His mother, Maud Huggins, living in Chapel Street, I believe, here in Charlestown, came down on that boat with me that Saturday morning. As my father had requested that I return home to attend what was called then the all the service of the Wesleyan Holiness Church, called then the Pilgrim Holiness Church, on August Monday in St. Kitts. It was that same day in the afternoon that this sad event took place. I believe, Mr. President, that by the end of the day, as we've heard before from your own words, it turned what was a beautiful day into a tragedy. Because some 240 or approximately that number of persons of the approximately 320 persons packed on the overcrowded vessel would perish. There would only be 91 survivors, we've been told. The impact of the disaster was devastating. It is a story of tremendous loss. It is a story of pain and tragedy. It is a story of the brutality that chance and fate can unleash so unexpectedly on humanity, leaving those survivors in its wake, searching for meaning and release. Today, as I traveled from the ferry pier to here, I got into a conversation with the driver of the taxi, Mr. Paris, I think his name is. And we spoke not only of those who would have been lost, but those family members, especially children, of those who remained as a result of the departure, untimely departure of their parents, their guardians, and loved ones. So the question comes to mind, have we been able to track them? Those who would have been maybe of the same age as myself then, young teenager, awaited that same summer the return of my GCE examination results. Those who were already past their secondary education life and were now maybe in colleges and universities, or those who were yet in primary schools and those who were infants, maybe just months old, who would have been left behind as a result of the untimely departure of their parents and guardians. And so today I wonder, where are these persons today? I hope that by the grace of God, they have survived. Survived through, I believe, what would have been the terrible impact of the sudden loss and disappearance 
of their parents and guardians and thus left to be at the mercy of God with the guidance of their loved ones who undertook the responsibility of caring for them. The story of the Christina disaster shares not only an anniversary, but also many similarities with the story of the journey of our people from slavery to freedom and independence that is marked by our Emancipation Day celebrations. They are both stories of untold suffering, but they are also stories of triumph. They are both monuments to our resilience as a people to beat the odds that come our way. And so today, as we keep the memory of those who lost their lives alive, we also celebrate the many heroic acts that were exhibited that day, that afternoon, that allowed the 91 to make it to shore and survive. We remember, therefore, the fishermen who had rushed to the scene and plucked very many out of what could have been a very watery grave for them. We remember those doctors, and we've heard Dr. Simmons a moment ago. We remember the nurses and the ordinary citizens who were on the scene to assist the victims as they came ashore. I want to submit here in this assembly today that there is heroism in all of us which often rises to the surface in the face of tragedy and adversity. The heroism displayed on that day serves as a reminder that we are all our brothers and sisters keeper. The Christina disaster was also a major transformation point in the history of our two islands as our society demonstrated the will to innovate and change for survivors. New safety rules were put in place by the administrations of the day. But as we reflect, were these the only possible things to do under those circumstances? Today, we can say that there has been truly transformation of these two islands, and we can say that truly there has been a socio-economic and political and governance revolution that has taken place in these intervening 50 years. I am pleased to say that the federal government and the Nevis Island administration of the 90s and early 200s took significant steps toward the liberalization of the transportation sector, which has led to a steady increase of operators that has made travel between the two islands much faster, easier, and much more comfortable. Today, we can say that history, to some extent, has been revisited. 
we have large numbers of persons still traveling between the two islands, but not necessarily for the same reason, but because there has been greater integration among the people of Nevis and the people of St. Kitts. The administration also implemented and reinforced many of the safety standards and record keeping rules that continue to keep our citizens, residents, and visitors safe because there continues to be that traffic between our two islands. Through the years, successive administrations have sought to regularize and deepen the relationship and the partnerships between the federal government and the Nevis Island administration, which I believe has healed many of the old wounds that once kept these two islands somewhat divided. And so when tra tragedy struck the Christina, it did not discriminate between the rich and poor, or between whether one was born in St. Kitts or in Nevis. We learned a powerful lesson that we are all one people, one federation under God, and we are all in this one boat called St. Kitts and Nevis together. This lesson is important now more than ever as our nation faces yet another disaster. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic in particular. Our spirit of overcoming beckons us to reach for a future that fulfills the dreams and the aspirations of those who are perished or who have perished on that day, the first day of August 1970. And so in closing, I ask that may the souls of the cherished departed continue to rest in peace eternal. And may God continue to bless our federation, St. Kitts and Nevis. May it please you, Mr. President.